Hey, I'm Gabriel, also known as Gabo the Guy. I'm passionate about traveling and taking people on amazing adventures. I'm on a journey to discover northern Portugal and experience the region's unique culture, astronomy, and beautiful landscape. Let's visit Porto in the North. Portugal is renowned for having some of the best wines in the world. Among them, the Vino Verde and the Port Wine, which has been made right here in the Douro Valley since the 17th century. Wine tourism has come a long way since then. And today, the north of Portugal is home to dozens of award-winning wines, fabulous hotels, Michelin star restaurants and breathtaking views. This is the food and wine of northern Portugal. My journey takes me from the vibrant city of Porto to the lower Mino region, where I'll visit Quinta da Veleda and Quinta de Lixa, before stopping at Casa La Pau in Vila Real. I will continue along the Douro Valley wine region and then head northeast to the region of Trashes Montes, ending my journey in the city of Braganza. I wake up feeling fresh and energized after an incredible stay at the Villa Foz Hotel and Spa, ready to start my food and wine journey in northern Portugal. We're in Villa Nova do Gaia, a type of port wine sanctuary where the wine cellars here have perfected the conditions to store tons and tons of liters of this sacred nectar. You cannot visit Porto without having a taste of this delicious port wine. I'm going to meet Regina, who is going to tell me all about the history of Ramos Pinto, and is going to give me a glimpse into the mind of the genius founder of this port wine company. Hello. Hello, Regina. Welcome to the Ramos Pinto house, and I will show you our museum. Art was very important to Adriano Ramos Pinto. All the furniture and equipment, they are originals, originals. and date from the early 20th century. We can see actually history in the making. Here was where everything happened. He was the first one to export port wines to Brazil and he made this exportation for the first time in bottle and with appealing labels. At that time, all the other exporters, they always exported in barrel, always ahead of his time. Here, the brothers, they received their most important clients and they built a throne for the clients, please. Oh, oh I feel privileged. <laughs> wow, they really knew how to make people feel important. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like a king on a throne. Over lovely. here we have exposed the most iconic labels from the early 20th century. The and bathroom, it's very interesting too. The brainstorming room. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> we can say that. So all the flower power from the door, I think, but image was always very important to Adriano. He lived art to the fullest. Yeah. Oh. We are in the cellar. The port wines, they will age here. We have a constant thermal stability all through the year, mm -hmm. winter and summer too. Here we have humidity and that's very important for the aging process. And how long will the port wine be sitting in the barrel itself? Between three and 40 years or longer. Whoa. It depends of the wine. You need to try the port wines, of course. I'm ready for it. <laughs> of course, let's go. The best part of the tour, it's the tasting, <laughs> of course. Over here we have the three families of port wines. The white is produced only with white grapes. Mm -hmm. Ruby and Tony, they are red wines. We will start with the white, Adriano White Reserva. It has an average of age of eight years. 
some honey flavors. Mm -hmm. It's very nice to drink as an aperitif, to join with dry fruits, for example, with cheeses too, if you want. Saúde! Cheers! <laughs> the second one, the ruby, okay? The ruby. Fruity flavors, a beautiful color, a red color. Majestic even. It is. And the scents. Yeah, you can scent. feel all the fruits yeah. and everything. Are you ready for the third one? Yes. So this one, it's the Adriano, Adriano. okay? Um Adriano, por favor. That's it. <laughs> what would Adriano tell us if he would be here today? How would he see this evolution of the port wine? We are starting to expand uh, the port wine to all the generations. Young people, they are starting to, to drink the port wine and that's great. Port to the people. That's it, for all the people. <laughs> for all the people all the of all classes, all ages. Of course. Beautiful. Okay. I'm now more informed and ready to start and continue my journey through the world of food and wine in Northern Portugal. Okay, thank you. It was a pleasure. One last cheers. Okay. Salud. Enjoy it, so the After learning about the history of port wine, I cross the bridge and head to downtown Porto to grab one of the city's favorite snacks. I decided to come and check out Portugal's best hot dog. They call it Cachorrinho. Isso! Obrigado! Thank you! So I came to pay tribute to the late Anthony Bourdain that visited this place on his journey to northern Portugal. This one's for you, Tony. Here in Portugal, they call this type of beer the Fino. Mainly people here would prefer the Lager, which is the lighter beer. But I decided to go with the Stout. Best way to wash your cachorrinho. Campeon! Another sunny day at the city of Porto. Being so close to the Atlantic Ocean, I head to the neighboring city of Matosinhos, where I'm going to get a very special lesson about the best seafood in northern Portugal. Portugal has over 800 kilometers of coastline, so fish recipes is something that has been perfected here for centuries. They call it marisqueira. These type of seafood restaurants specializes in the freshest fish and shellfish dishes. Today we're in the city of Matosinhos, where we're about to have the freshest and the best sea bass in the world. I came here to the restaurant of Os Luziados to meet Mr. Falcao, who is about to teach me about the culinary world of the ocean. Uriel, how are you? Great, how are you? Nice to see you. Please grab a seat. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. Wonderful to see you. Tell me a bit about yourself. All my memories of childhood were related with the nice family cuisine, using a lot of fish. We have a great supply of the catch of the day. Mm -hmm. Fresh fish and selfish arrives every day to our fishing port and we can buy it, afford it at an accessible price and taste wonderful fish. So fish was something coming to the table every day. Tasting is part of the discovery and the cultural discovery of the country. It's not only the pleasure of eating, but is to understand the country. So the local shrimps, the coastal shrimps that are quite famous, the goose barnacles and our clams here, I knew there is something hiding behind yes. all your knowledge. I brought the official outfit of the gastronomic brotherhood of the sea. Dun, 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 dun. I wear it when I go to a nice dinner with our fish and seafood. So there is this strong bond between the people living here by the sea and the life living in the sea. Absolutely. There is a local culture about it. Even the art, even the architecture of the sea inspire the local people. And the brotherhood is not only about the traditions, but of our local culture. It will be my first time. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I will invite you to start 
by the goose barnacles. You should break, break the neck like this, yeah. like this, and it's ready. The sea in your mouth. So this is how the Atlantic Ocean tastes like. Absolutely. They are so delicate. It was why we started by the, the goose barnacles. Good barnacles, good for gabo. Now, let me introduce our coastal shrimp. They are really a delicacy. How tasteful they are. Mm -hmm. Seems that the seaweed aromas came to the shrimp. The fish here is mainly done by small fishermen and small boats. They travel short distance and they arrive soon with the fresh catch of the day. Mm -hmm. Everything comes fresh and quite alive to our table and that is one of the differences that we can feel here. Let me introduce the wild sea bass from our coast. It goes to the oven, covered with salt. The salt will preserve the juices and the, the flavors of the sea inside the sea bass. It's a traditional way, in my perspective, probably the best way to savor the, the local sea bass. So when he cuts it open, he removes the layer the, of the salt. Yes, the layer, then the skin is removed easily, yeah. and then the fish will be prepared in each plate without bones. And look how white is the meat yeah. here, with uh, potatoes and steamed vegetables. It's a nice combination with our Vingo Verde wine. Vingo Verde? Yes. One more salute. Salute. A little of olive oil, may I? Yes. From the north of Portugal. You know that uh, here in the north of Portugal, old olive tree plantations and local varieties of olives allow the region to produce really world-class olive oils. And the olive oil does give it this twist. At the yes, end. yeah. The harmony of the ocean and the fish. Yes. With yeah. the Vingo Verde wine, wonderful. Uh, I kind of like this Vingo Verde. I think I need to learn more about it. Yeah. You should explore the region. I'm loving Portugal every minute. <laughs> Following Mr. Falcao's advice, it's time to get on the road and head east. Just 30 minutes away is my next stop. Quinta da Veleda. In the heart of Quinta da Veleda lies one of the most beautiful historical gardens in all Portugal. Here you can have a lovely event, drink cocktails while looking over the vineyards. This place is so magical it looks like it came out of a fairy tale. So romantic. Oh, solo mio, mi bella menina, te quiero tanto. Would you look at this lovely tea house in the middle of the lake? The attention to details here is marvelous. This is how I feel in Portugal every day. I have my mouth full, but I just can't get enough. Baby Cabrita, would you like some vino verde with that? Yes, you will! Yes, you will! Quinta da Veleda is known worldwide, not only for its Vino Verde, but also for their exceptional brandy, produced right here, from the very same grapes. Aha! I found it! The place where they hide their Aguardente, the Portuguese brandy. The brandy inside are listening to the monks praising and singing the gospel of God. And now I finally found it, the Aguardente. And there it is, the key to the Adega Vela, the secret old wine cellar. Now I understand how the Portuguese conquered half of the world, the Aguardente. Oh. Oh, I can feel and smell the angels share in the air. Lucky angels. Good morning, bom dia. Yes, I'm enjoying Quinta da Valera as well. Oh, you want to show me the way? Let's go. I'm making my way to the old kitchen where Ana Maria is going to teach me how to make homemade bread. Or as they say in Portugal, Mauna Massa. 
putting my hands in the dough. Hola! Hola! Dá uma volta, yes. spin around and do the hokey pokey. Do norte? Sim, do norte. Sim, pão com chouriço. Pão com chouriço. Sim. Água com um bocadinho de sal. Sal? Sim. Sim, o que mais? Mais nada. Agora vamos tirar o brasume do forno. Let's do it! O brasume. Ah. Posso? Sim. After heating the oven for hours, we just took out all the coal and now it's time to place the bread inside. Sim, sim, sim. Aí? Sim. Agora pega na tampa. The door. I'll see you shortly. Ok. We're ready. Está pronto. Obrigadíssimo. De nada. Now it's time for a little drink as I wait for the bread to be ready. Hey guys, thanks for waiting for me. I just finished placing the bread in the oven. Hello, Hello Gabriel. Gabriel. What a beautiful table we have here. This makes me feel like at home. Business, politics, philosophy, everything yeah. is discussed around the table. Yeah. There is no yeah. sacred thing here. Yeah. And the meals, it's not that you can't eat and you go. It's no, all it's a, a place ceremony. Where you talk, where yeah. you talk, where you, you enjoy, where you stay for a little while. For great friends, great meal and the best wine. Yeah. yeah. Such an incredible day here at Quinta de Avaleda. And now I finally arrived to the mezzanine, the private upper floor, where I get to taste the nectar of the gods. Aguardente. I see they've prepared a bottle for me, a Degavela, 12 year old brandy, aged in the French oak barrels we saw earlier on. And now it's time for me to try it before I decide which bottle I would take back home with me. Mm. Is it you? Is it you? Or is it you? Oh, there's a lot more over there. Mm. Mm. Manuel Pedro Gage, I've learned so much about your legacy. The patron of the Aveleda Wine Company. It's time to go back home with me. I've learned so much about the Vino Verde region today. The experience at Quinta de Aveleda is a wonderful introduction to the world of Vino Verde. Founded in 1870, the property is now on the fifth generation of the Geddes family. 150 amazing years of history, commitment, and tradition. Next stop, the Monverde Wine Experience Hotel. Vino Verde is an origin wine from the greenest region of the country, the Minho. The Monverde Hotel in Quinta Delicia lies in the heart of the Vino Verde region. Here, the vine inspires art, design, and a way of life. This wine experience hotel offers a variety of activities and today I get a chance to be a winemaker for a day. A walk through the halls of the hotel reveals an artistic combination of temporary and permanent exhibitions. For example, this masterpiece by Paulo Neves that shows us the different leaves of the Quinta representing the 365 days of the year. What is the great tradition that hides in the Vino Verde region? What makes it so unique that this is the only place in the world where one can produce Vino Verde wine? These are the questions that I'm compelled to ask as I'm observing this beautiful vineyard scenery. I'm about to head out to meet Pedro, who is going to teach me all about the Vino Verde wines by making my own bottle of Vino Verde.
Hey Pedro. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you very much. So you're going to teach me how to become a winemaker. Exactly. Here uh, we're going to produce our wines for our tastes. It's a little bit different than trying the wine prepared by the winemaker. With this activity, the idea is for you to do exactly the same work the winemaker does every day. You're going to try the five grapes. You're going to choose your favorite. I recommend for you to choose two or three grapes, not more than that. And take the bottle with you like a souvenir to drink with your family, with your friends. And bring them here so they can make their own wine. I'm already thinking about which blend should I make. <laughs> In the case of the offering, you're gonna find more tropical flavors, like pineapple, some melon, some onion in the middle taste. What could you tell me about the Aveso? Aveso and Arinto, it's the two grapes we use to produce our sparkling wines. And then we have the Arinto. Arinto, it's a traditional grape we use in the blend. The nose is gonna be completely different than the mouth. A lot of alcoholic flavors. The wine is very creamy in the middle taste. Creamy. Some uh, jam figs. Now a bit of Loreiro. This is the magical moment where the winemaker gets to blend the grapes he's been growing throughout the year. And I promise I don't reveal your blend to our winemaker. Well, they are all Portuguese local species. Yes. Now we bottle it. Exactly. I used to hate chemistry lessons in school and now I'm loving it. Because it's wine. <laughs> exactly. 87. 87. 0.5 milliliters of Loreiro. I hope I chose right. I like the scent already. Perfect blend. The Monverde Wine Experience Hotel is much more than a place to stay at. It is a place for wine lovers to come and indulge with the culture of the Vino Verde region. It is a place for people to come and admire art inspired by nature. And it's a place where you can come as an amateur and live as a consul. You can experience here activities that has to do from the first day the vine starts producing the flowers and the grapes till the last moment when you get to bottle your own Vino Verde wine. The Minho region was a pleasure to discover and as I continue my journey north, it's time for the next item on the menu. Delicious conventual sweets. After trying the famous Pastel de Nata and learning its story, it's time to discover a less known but equally historic sweet. Traditionally, monks and nuns have been making wine and beer throughout the world. But here in Villa Real, the nuns of Casa La Pound have been perfecting a recipe for a very special pastry. Hola! Bem-vindo! Wow! This is where the magic happens. Como vocês vão ver, é tudo feito manualmente. Estamos a falar de receitas com 400 anos de história. Vamos certamente provar. E, vamos, e vou-vos falar um bocadinho de que é uh, os diferentes doces em Portugal. Em Portugal temos os doces conventuais, que foi talvez o maior apogeu da doceria portuguesa, com a vinda do açúcar do Brasil. Uhum. Acabamos por mudar para sempre a maneira de fazer os doces. Portugal é hoje conhecido pelos doces conventuais. É talvez o maior património identitário, cultural da gastronomia. A, a maneira como os portugueses trabalharam. A gema de ouvir o açúcar, nem eu soube trabalhar. It's time to get dressed. Yes. All right. Feel yes. like a monk already. And this. Now you're crowning me yes. to be a part of the monastery. <laughs> Aqui estamos a ver a crista de galo, uh -huh. tal doce conventual que eu digo, que é com gema de ovo e Amendoa. The sweets here are not only from the land and the trees that the Douro Valley gives, but also relates to the people and fertility. Estamos a falar muitas vezes das culturas celtas, onde a sexualidade está muito, muito prominente nos doces. Encontramos então aqui o, o Pito Santa Luzia. This is the cross of the Crusades. Sim, é a Cruz Cristo, é Cruz Cruzados, sim. É um doce também à base lá tá, da gema de ovo e do açúcar, só que também tem imensa amêndoa. Os conventos tinham três doces. Os pudins, pudim. Pudim. Tinham os, do, os bolos, 
bolos, bolos de fraile e, também. E os, e, e os pastéis. Isto é um pastel. Ou oh, pastel. Isto é um pastel. The pastry. Yes. Pastry, pudding e bolos. bolos. É tudo manual, por isso nenhuma crista é igual. Hum. Sabes que primeiro não havia máquinas, então tudo era amassado à mão. Sim, eu ainda sou do tempo que se amassava tudo à mão. Sou bem, bem antiga já. <risos> <risos> Vou-te tirar estas folhas que já foram estendidas ali pelas meninas. E vou-te pôr à prova. It's time to get my hands dirty. Yes. 400 anos de história. 400 years of history and pastry making, monks, nuns and love stories. Yes. Okay, another? Aqui. Here a bit more. Aqui. You can see it, right? Yes. You can see where the dough needs an extra touch. Yes. O galo vai estar contente. Vai estar, o galo vai estar contente. Agora vamos pôr uh, ovos. E da depois vamos bailar. Vamos. Yes. Jeans. I'm gonna go old school. I'm gonna go old school. Ah, very good. Isso assim. Tá, e tá com a mão. Chiquita. Tada! Very good. Here we go. This is us doing it with the nuts. Ah, boa. Que, estás contratado. Queres vir para aqui trabalhar? Sim, sí, como não? O segundo want... homem é vir para aqui. Can I get the suit as well? <laughs> This is conventional suit, though? Yes. Look how it looks, like a gift yes. from the gods. Yes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Espero que tenhas gostado deste workshop, esta viagem ao mundo das memórias, de memórias muito antigas, mas que ainda se fazem hoje no século XXI, com grande garra minha, grande esforço. Espero que tenhas gostado. What a pioneer, I love it. And this is the e result isto? of our workshop. E isto? Mm. Há que fazer com um brinde, um vinho de Douro. Tchim, tchim. A nossa. As memórias e a, e a gastronomia. And preservation of culture, and gastronomy and love. And love. Amor. Saúde. Amor, saúde. One more gift? Oh my God. Thank you so much. O pãozinho so... quente de dia 1 de novembro. Não te podes esquecer. Wow, wow. Girls, sisters, you really touched my heart. Now I feel like family. You are family. Ah, it just makes me want to sing. So let's do it. We are family. Do, 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 do. I got all my sisters with me. On the next episode, I continue exploring the hidden gastronomic secrets of northern Portugal.